Hey, my name is David Muhammad, and welcome to The Digital Strategist. Um, we're going to talk about everything that has to do with online marketing, search marketing, and mobile marketing. Um, my guest for tonight is a good friend of mine, Terry Carmichael. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through Terry's bio real briefly, and then we're going to kind of dive into some questions. Uh, Terry has a degree in molecular medicine and genetics from Wayne State University. He's out of Detroit. Um, also out of California, we kind of both have that Kansas City, right. excuse me, that Midwestern California thing both working for us. Um, Terry's a serial entrepreneur, so I think this is your third or fourth um, life oh, yeah, fourth. as an entrepreneur. Exactly, now. exactly, um, fourth life. Why don't you kind of start us at the first one? Uh, first one uh, was a lot of fun. Uh, that was just very briefly, it didn't involve internet or anything. Okay. That was uh, ETS systems where we installed security systems into residential and, and homes. Uh, and that was uh, a fun What year experience. are we talking here? We, uh, we were talking 1989. That's pretty technical for 89, though. 89. So no, were these remote systems? It was in, in high school is when we started doing it, okay. when I was in high school. Nice. It was, uh, you know, something to do in the summertime. Very nice. And had a friend whose father had a, an alarm company and, you know, brought us in and we learned how to do it and basically started doing it on our own. So we built, a, built so ourselves up to about 12 accounts. We were moder monitoring the accounts, had uh, the alarm systems hooked up. So Did you guys have sort of a data center that you were monitoring, some sort of we, antiquated we data center? All of that, yeah, okay. but we did have the data center, and we'd sure, go there sure. regularly, and they managed our accounts. Okay. But, uh, so the alarm goes off, it calls the, d the data center, and they dispatch the, the police to the home or the fire department, depending on what So you guys were doing this in high on. school? Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. yeah, that was a fun time. So, so what were some of the more robust sort of entrepreneurial ventures that you got into? Well, I, I received my master's in molecular medicine and genetics from Wayne State, and mm. I, I, you know, was looking for a, you know, to start a genetics company, mm. and so I got pulled out into California to work for a company. Northern California, and sure. Actually, that was southern. It oh, was really? uh, Los Angeles. Spent okay. five years down there working for a company called Kyogen, where I came up with the idea to. Um, to provide direct-to-consumer genetic testing. And that would be for Huntington's, uh, Korea, or uh, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and carrier testing, cystic fibrosis, and stuff so like that. So direct-to-consumer, someone can go to your site, download? That's exactly it. They would wow. go to the site, they would be interested in you know testing themselves or seeing if they're a carrier for a particular genetic disorder, and they would order a kit. It would be sent home to, to their house. They'd be able to collect the swabs and send it back to, to the lab for testing, and they get results. What year is it? Seven or ten days. Uh, that was in 1997. <laughs> launched, was, launched the company. This is like... And like, back then, that, yeah, was, yeah, <laughs> that was early, early. Yes, yes. And yes. We, we found that most of the people that were coming to the site were really for DNA paternity testing, ah. which is something we couldn't have The Maury Povich on. sort of niche market you had. That's right. There. Yeah. But uh, the, the key is to listen to your consumers and what they want. Smart marketers yeah. understand that the market is always smarter than the marketer. Yes. Yeah. And we quickly adapted. We became a DNA paternity testing very rapidly. Online. Online DNA paternity testing. Online DNA paternity testing. We were the first to provide direct-to-consumer DNA <laughs> paternity testing. And this is that, like 97, 98? Yes, wow. exactly. We, we had a great affiliate online affiliate program where we would compensate affiliates that would drive traffic to us, and people would um, order free kits, DNA collection kits, that we would send to their homes that would include the swabs and everything necessary to... Uh, collect a DNA, uh, sure. collect the I samples for a DNA test, and send it back to us. And we'd be able to track all the way, all back to the affiliate that pointed them to our website for the order. So you had a bifurcated model. You had obviously the delivery service model. Yes. Right on the exactly. DTC side, but then you also had this monetization model going on with the affiliate um, sort of component. With the affiliate, the affiliates would mo be monetized. Exactly. We would send out the free kits. We get the order for the test and do the testing. And we'd be able to track that back to the affiliate that you know sent that traffic to us, and we would give them commission on the order. This is pre Google. So that my, uh, <laughs> my, all this all this that stuff that we're talking about early. is pre we, we were all focused on Yahoo back then. You know, marketing. Uh, I'll even throw another one out at you, um, Magellan. Magellan, Northern Lights. Yes. I mean, these are some of the very first um, Lycos. <laughs> um, let's not forget about Lycos. Lycos was a big yeah. player back Lycos. in those days as well. Yeah. Um, uh, um, we used uh, pay-per-click was, uh, was before Overture. Um, mm. We had, uh, it, it was AHA. Before Omniture. 
uh, Omniture, right. rather. There was a AHA, mm. uh, which was out of uh, Salt Lake City. And they, and they of course, Double Click was... And GoTo. Go to dot com. Right, right. I remember that. Well, so you have you you have proven um, um, for the audience that you've been you've been around, you've been through the trenches, you've kind of seen um, web marketing um, sort of evolve from its 1.0 yes um, incantation to what we have today, which is so, just phenomenal. Well, search changes. driven, mobile driven, um, and all those things. So have been enormous. I kind of want to fast forward a little bit. Um, um, hard to keep up with what's going on Well, nowadays. you know, um, Moore's Law, Moore's Law, I'm, I'll, I always throw that out there, you know, Moore's Law, Gordon Moore, um, the guy that created the chip at Intel, you know, you know, back in 71, 72, they came up with this mathematical sort of um, paradigm. As you know, know, a double in speed. Every, every 18 10. months, yeah, <laughs> every 10 to 18 months, yeah. you know, the, the chip would logarithmically, by powers of 10, become more powerful. Mm -hmm. And of course, if um, you buy a smart device today, um, they're already advertising um, you know, they're already talking about um, the 5G phones and already talking about the second yeah. iPad already. Um, right. Folks are still trying to figure out everything um, inside uh, the current iPad. The current. So that's Moore's Law at work. Mm -hmm. um, and so smart marketers that market online understand that Moore's Law is always going to drive the technology. Yes, mm -hmm. no? Yeah. So you don't, you don't you can't get, be stagnant. You don't you get too caught to a platform. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. You don't get too caught into the platforms. That's right. And so having that's sort of the perfect seg. Um, and so um, having said that, um, with smartphones, um, broadband, um, all over the place, yes, no? Yes, very important. Um, you know, very, very, important. very powerful laptops, Wi-Fi. You, you can get your information kind of the way you want it, anywhere you want it. Um, yes. Yes, no? Yes. Sort of on. Exactly. Yeah. Some of our websites that uh, we're managing today through the Split Target organization is, uh, you know, it's seeing about 20% of its traffic from mobile phones. Oh, really? From yeah. the smartphone. That's yeah. up. That's up. You know, probably 10, 15 percent just over the last couple of years. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's Obviously, up a hundred percent from with the last the, couple yeah, yeah, years. Okay, it's which just is enormous. With growth. Um, with um, Apple's um, offerings in and out with um, and with BlackBerry and, and, and the Droid as well. And Droid. Yeah. yeah. And of course, uh, tablet computing kind of taking yeah. up. How, how, how do you how do you see SEO, search engine optimization? How do you see good old fashioned SEO um, playing out um, in this new? Um, um, age of mobility. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about current trends in SEO and how they play together friendly or unfriendly in the sandbox with mobility. Yeah. So what are you seeing out there as far as SEO well, is You know, SEO is very Search important. Search engine optimization. Yeah. Search engine optimization is extremely important. That's where most sites are going to be getting their What is search from. engine optimization? I mean, um, I know what it you is. You know, basically, for our audience, let's explain you have your website and you want to make sure that it's found for the key terms that people use to find what you are you know, providing the services or products sure. that, that you're providing. So you want your website as a core to be able to um, to be able to have and and you know attract those people that are typing in and looking for the types of so folks go on a offering. search platform. They've got a need. They're self-selecting. Hey, I've got a need. I'm on the purchase path. Mm -hmm. um, in the 21st century, you know, as a marketer, you're not necessarily creating the need as you did in the 20th century mm -hmm. with TV. Um, because of search, folks are putting themselves on the purchase path. Yeah. What you're saying is that your content um, has to be deployed in a way um, with, with its keywords so that your search engine optimization is going to come up high in the queries once they do search. Yes, yes, no? yes. Okay. and that's right. I mean, there, and you, you want the content to have your keywords appropriately placed. You want the content... Talk about appropriately placed. Well, you have meta tags. So you have the title tag, you have um, the description tag, and then you have the... Um, the H1 tags in, in the page, which are the sort of the header to the paragraphs, sure. uh, which describe what's of important. Of those meta tags, which ones are the most important, Terry? Uh, I, I think, you know, a lot of them carry weight. If okay. you have important keywords, you, you want the keywords in all of the meta tags, right? The keywords that are important to the page should be in each, uh, in each of the meta tags and should be in the core, uh, you know, content of that page as well. So it's very important that those are everywhere. And it's also important that each page on your website has completely unique content. Mm -hmm. the, t the title tags for your page, the, all the meta tags should be unique. And do you want... Uh, Why unique? Um, does, does Google or any other search engine reward um, a, a site more because of this unique and fresh content? Uh, yes. It, Google will alert you to mm -hmm. your website. If you use Google uh, tools, the webmaster tools, mm -hmm. it will tell you um, under error that, oh, these two pages that you have on your, your website have the same meta tags. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, and so, you know, that just shows that Google deems it important that you're very specific on each page mm. to what that page is about. And it's much, uh, you know, search engine optimization, a lot of people just focus on the website itself okay. and making sure that the keywords there are there. are other peripheral components, though, yes, no? Yes, okay. certainly. There, there directories? Really directories. Let's talk about internet directories. Important. Internet directories, um, to SEO. such as, a, yeah, we, we've got City Search, we have um, Merchant Search, Yelp. Yelp is a great one. Uh, Yelp is a directory and a rating um, you know, solution sure. that people use most commonly for restaurants. Uh, they'll write uh, reviews on a restaurant, they'll share with their friends, and Yelp has become um, you know, much more than just that. It's, it's a social community. There are people that rate everything that they do on Yelp. True. And they, they live on Yelp. You can see they've rated, you know, 13,000 different yes, their places. their social networking hub. It's, it's, it is. It's, it's where they and digital they, homestay. Yeah. They have embraced it. They've sure. become a Yelper. Sure. If They're totally engaged. Yeah, <laughs> totally engaged. Sure. And they've embraced it and become uh, you know, enthusiastic. So how do those internet directories impact your SEO? Internet directories well, like Yelp, how do they positively well, Google, impact your yeah, we, SEO? Yeah, we can talk about the directories, and, and we could also go on to blogs and everything. And maps. Uh, and maps that uh, are peripheral to your website. And if they're active and they have links back to your website and they're maintained regularly and Google recognizes when it indexes, okay, this directory listing for this company where this website's here is updated regularly, then um, it recognizes the site as being relevant. And we hear mm -hmm. that term being associated with search engine optimization Relevancy. more and yeah, more yeah, and more. Yeah. Relevancy is so important. Um, relevant to the search. Relevant to the time, mm -hmm. too. I mean, it's relevant to the keywords, but also, is it, is it fresh? Is that content, has it been updated in the last month? Mm -hmm. And if it has, Google you know, gives you another, uh, another little tick. And so uh, you, you climb up that ladder and become a, you know, an optimized website for the keywords that are most When you're optimized, um, what... What are the positions? Is it top eight <coughs> positions, first page? Is it first couple of pages? How, would, how do you define optimized? We, we really want to, uh, you know, when, when we set out on a, a search engine optimization program, we sure. want to be in the top five. You know, the, the top three are really the ones That's that really are getting where you most need of to the be. traffic. Okay. <clears throat> the top five. And we, we, cert, we aim to be in the top five for the most valuable keywords. But... There are uh, a lot of low-hanging low fruit that come along with that. So if you're, if you're for example, we've worked with a, a, a law firm, and they do medical malpractice. Mm. Now, that is hugely competitive. Sure. To be ranked number one for medical Ambulance malpractice. Ambulance chasers, mm, yeah, sure. Is very difficult. But it's not that difficult to be ranked number one for medical malpractice in Verona, New Jersey. <coughs> Verona, New right, Jersey. Right, right, exactly. Right, right. So the, the, the grant... The granularity, I mean, your geo-targeting, that, that really makes a difference yeah. is what you're saying. And that's huge to, to understand right now because search engine optimization, um, you know, is going through a big change. Okay. It's becoming localized. Mm -hmm. It used to be when you did a search in California for something, um, garage door service, and you did a search in New Jersey, the same results would would. Yeah, if I'm in Fresno, you. California, <clears throat> I mean, I don't care about garage door opening <clears throat> companies in Kansas City, Missouri, necessarily. Right. Yeah. But now when you search for garage door, locally, Google right away puts up a map and says, here are garage yeah, doors in your area, because it recognizes that this is a key term that should be localized. And Google has differentiated between localized key terms and nationalized. Wow. So your results are different. We're gonna um, <coughs> we're gonna take a we're gonna stop for a moment and take a pause here for station PSA, and then we're gonna come right back to the digital strategist with my main man Terry Carmichael. Thanks. Great. After 17 years working as a mason, Mike was laid off. I met him when he came into the library looking for help. He found a job opening, but the application was only online. Mike said he'd spent his entire life around tools, but had never used a computer. I showed him how, and he ended up applying for numerous jobs online. I saw Mike the other day. His new computer skills paid off. He's working again. New Jersey libraries are transforming lives. Tell us your story.
Welcome back to The Digital Strategist. I'm your host, David Muhammad, and I have my guest, Terry Carmichael, here with me. He's the CEO of Split Target. Um, Split Target is a very dynamic, um, I guess you'd call it, search marketing company? Uh, we're a contract marketing organization. Okay. We, uh, we spend a lot of time e-marketing, um, whether it be you know, with social media or okay. you know, networking, developing websites. But we also are involved with bringing products to the retail market as well. So if you want your, uh, your product to be on the shelf at uh, Rite Aid or CVS, we've had experience doing that as well. Multifaceted. So um, <clears throat> you kind of get, you, you kind of understand marketing on the brick and mortar side as well. <clears throat> so you bring an integrated approach to your clients. That's right. Which I think is That's very right. helpful. Yeah, yeah. One, one of the knocks digital guys <clears throat> get yeah. is that we live in a bubble. You know, everything's yeah. ones and o's and binary code and we don't care anything about the brick and mortar world. But I think yeah. that's somewhat of an oversimplification. Yeah. Um, I think um, really adept digital marketers understand that folks just don't live in the virtual world. They're actually accessing um, the digital world from the brick and mortar world. Mm -hmm. So the more you understand about their lifestyle, the more your your technology is going to be integrated into their lifestyle. <clears throat> yes. Yes, no? Yes, definitely. So that's always sort of been our approach. Um, and so having said that, I'm, I'm wondering, how does your company approach lead generation? Now, we've talked pretty, pretty in-depth about SEO. You know quite a bit about search engine optimization. You know mm -hmm. um, quite a bit about you know, driving folks to, uh, well, excuse me, once folks have gotten to a search platform, leveraging that behavior mm -hmm. you know, and converting those folks into leads. Yeah. So we've talked search. Now let's talk another tactic. <clears throat> let's talk email. Mm -hmm. Let's talk email marketing. Yeah, definitely. There's well, you know, email marketing is, you know, it's it's <clears throat> so 20th century. But it works. It still though. works, babe. Right, 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 right. And it, so it, let's talk about email marketing. It, it, it's a great way to stay in communication with your uh, with your client base. How do you guys go? What is your process with your clients in, 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 in developing um, effective email marketing campaigns? Okay. Well, it, it always starts with, you know, getting the email. Um so when you put a lot of money into building a search engine optimized website, mm -hmm. and then you start spending money on SEM and pay-per-click and getting people to your website, you want to convert them. And you know, converting them in one sense is getting contact information. And an email is very valuable. Having uh, a, a website that will, you know, a, you know, provide them with a white paper or some sure. valuable information, a free course for Biopharma Institute. We offer free courses all the time. Um, you find that's a great, is, is that a great exchange for their lead? It, it certainly is. It certainly it's is. very we, specific we have a, information that we they're have looking for. We abbreviated courses. Mm -hmm. They may be a half an hour um, long and have, you know, a broad view of the content. Mm -hmm. And then they could upgrade, mm -hmm. you know, of course. pay $129 and <laughs> they could get the full length sure. course. <clears throat> and it's a great way for them to try something new. A lot of people haven't, um, haven't tried e-learning. So they, uh, you know, this is something new. So we have to give them something to demo. So they opt in. <clears throat> you give them the offer. Yep. They opt in. They opt in. You give them the free <clears throat> um, knowledge transfer. Mm -hmm. They get that piece. So then what do you do next? <clears throat> well, then uh, we will regularly email them uh, other deals, other uh, opportunities to buy <clears throat> and keep them updated on changes, uh, things that are happening, things mm -hmm. that we're doing to, uh, you know, if our courses are updated. And we also specifically <clears throat> cater to, specific, to different groups based on the type of things that they've requested mm -hmm. on our, our website. Uh, right. If it's a clinical course, we know they're interested in clinical. So you've got it's a thin drug slice development. based upon their click-throughs. So we know what, okay. you know, the, what the target audience is, and we specifically cater to them on a regular basis. Because a lot of times, these people, they're not ready to buy. Are you performing <clears throat> behavioral targeting on these people <clears throat> at your site? I mean, are you a targeting? A little bit. Yeah, okay. yeah, a little bit. Sounds like a little BT that I'm hearing yeah. in there. Okay. It's a, a little bit. Which I'm not against. I'm not <laughs> averse to BT. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, right. So, yeah. We'll target your behavior all day long over here. So nothing wrong right. with that. But, um, you know, the key with emails... And you know, there's there's a strategy and a philosophy as to how often you want to. I was that you know where I was going. You know, where I, hit somebody at once a, a day. No, that's probably too much. Once a month, uh, that may be too little. Sure. You know, every two weeks, that may be good. Okay. But it depends on who you're sending it to and your message. If you have something very valuable that they like to hear, then more often is better. Mm. 
So it, just, it depends on the audience <clears throat> and the campaign yeah. um, frequency? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Very good. And what, what you're providing to them. If it's really meaty, good content that's fresh and informative and valuable, then they're going to love getting it more often. So once they've <clears throat> opted in to your campaign, to, to your campaign mm -hmm. they've taken the first offer, you're in, a you're, you're in an ongoing marketing dialogue with them now. You guys are kind of developing relationship. They're engaged in your content, so the relationship's kind of starting to take off. Exactly. Yes, no? Yep. Um, so the next phase, are you developing a list with these folks? And oh. are you, are you then, would you then remarket or sell? I mean, where do you cut off with <clears throat> their data is, is where I'm going here. Once yep. you start developing this list, what, what, what's the cutoff with the data? With the, you it mean, just depends? You mean when we exclude them from the list, no, drop them from the list? No, no, they're still in the list. Yeah. Do you rent that list out? Do you oh. think? Well, it, it, it depends. We, we don't rent our lists out. We use them for our own purposes. So they're all proprietary, okay. Yeah, so we keep them inside. But, uh, you know, the, the key is uh, you're, you're looking for a window of opportunity, mm -hmm. and you want that window to be open nice. when you hit it. So a lot of times people, and I do this, I, I'll get an email and I'll say, oh, geez, not right now. You know, I'll tell you, I can't tell you how many emails I get from 1-800-Flowers all the time, you know? <laughs> and it's like, oh, Valentine's Day. So I, I check it. I'm like, okay, hey, this looks like a good deal. I'm going to, you know. So, so you're, we're talking loyalty here. Yeah. This is a, so, you know, so we're talking build, so we're talking <clears throat> brand loyalty here. So you're saying email is a, is a mechanism that you can use to build loyalty online? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a great way to build How loyalty. do you offset the idea that most folks think that, you know, it, uh, email marketing is such a, a distraction. You know, most of it is spam. Well, it's uh, and and that's not entirely incorrect. Okay, you know, most of it is spam. If, okay. you, if you look at uh, you know how much spam is out there, about ninety percent of emails that are sent are spam. Ninety percent. Yeah. Wow. Spam is a real problem and a huge problem for big corporations. They're dealing with it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And to manage that is just uh, there's all kind of software culture. out there, yeah. <clears throat> right. And unfortunately, like because Pulsini of that, is a software they use to manage spam. Yeah. Exactly, and because of that, as a result, a lot of uh, real emails end up getting blocked and caught up in spam. Totally. So, <clears throat> a lot of times these days, you send an email out, uh, you know, there is a chance that your, uh, you know, the recipient's not going to receive your email. So. Given that, given, given that. Um, <clears throat> set of realities, what's a good open ratio um, that, that marketers should look to kind of calibrate um, outcomes on? Well, you want a good list. And if you, if you have a, you know, these, the list is clients, people that have really given you your, their email and are interested so in your services. So real list, in other words. Yeah. yeah they, you know. Folks that have really opted in. You'll, you'll have a 30%, 25, 30%. Hey, three out of 10 rate. is not bad. I'll take that all day. Yeah. But that, it takes you a while to cultivate such a large list. You know, we're, we're emailing to 25,000 people. Nice. Okay. So that's nice. And a lot of them. How long know, does it 20%, take to get that list? Percent. Uh, we've grown it over, gosh, about you know five years or so. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and those are real people that have come to us and given us their their email address. These are folks that are really in the fold with you. Yes, you know, and, and we know who they are, and they, they belong to pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, and so they and and they're involved in training, which the the biopharma institute, the company I'm referring to, is, uh, is does a lot of emails, uh, focuses on that that industry. So. How do you how do you go about developing the message in emails? What is the process <clears throat> for that? You want um, you know there's a big strategy, and we could go on and on and on. You well, know yeah, that, yes, David. yes, you yes. Know just, that. just I mean, you know, okay. Give, I mean, give it, me some bullets. You, Come on, give me throw me a bone here. Give we, us some bullets. We like um, we like emails that become viral. Um, so, you know, a lot of times when we have the free, you know, like um, the dirty joke that goes around the office that you know, well, yeah. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> but we have a clean joke. Right. It's not really a joke. It's a, for example, a course, a course, um, a free course on cardiovascular disease. We blast it out to a, a, a bunch of a targeted you know, list. Our, our list, and then I'll, we see somebody at uh, you know a, a therapeutics company that is involved with cardiovascular disease. Uh, somebody opens it, and then. We, they, they obviously passed it off to somebody else in the company. Mm. And then all of a sudden, we see seven people in that company that are all looking at our course. Mm. You know, oh, well, that's viral. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, you know, people thought it was valuable and passed it on. So that's, uh, that's one thing that we're looking for. We like to grow our lists by providing, the, you know, by providing a viral aspect, some reason for them to share. And nowadays, it's so easy to share. When you send out an email, they could, they could you know, um, you know, 
pass it along to their Facebook page and share it with everybody. They could put it on which LinkedIn. Was my, which was my next question. How, how are you integrating your email <clears throat> campaigns into the social media sphere? That's the, exactly how we do it. We make it easy for them to, uh, you know, things are changing all the time. I mean, it is just phenomenal. Yeah, we're last very year, fluid space. It's last year, fluid we, space. We, we didn't have any Facebook. We, we, we weren't, you know, in, in, integrating Facebook into our emails okay. at all. But now every email that we send out to people says, hey, you know, like us at Facebook, you know, come check out our Facebook page. And it's amazing. You're watching TV commercials or whatever. Everything is Facebook at Macy's.com. People aren't saying go to Macy's.com. They're saying go to Facebook at Macy's.com because the, the retailers know, the business owners know, everyone knows that if they go to Facebook, there is, you know, a huge... Uh, more of a chance that they're going to share it with their friends. Yeah, the, and you're going to become viral instantly. That's the, uh, and what you're developing is some you know, street credibility. And you're also that loyalty. Right. Because if they become a friend of yours on Facebook or a fan of yours, then... Yes, that credibility we're kind of talking about. Yes. Very good. Very so good. it's just, uh, yeah, things are changing so rapidly it's hard to... Uh, now, in your space, just, in, 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 in your company's space specifically, the bio pharma space, which is a space that is highly regulated, um, highly capitalized, um, and um, going through a lot of changes. So um, how are you um, generating leads um, for marketers that market directly to highly regulated spaces like pharmaceuticals, for instance? I know you guys are highly regulated by the FDA. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you have to do or not do pursuant to online <clears throat> marketing, search marketing, email marketing to make sure that you don't get in trouble with the feds, as it were? Well, when, when you look at the pharma companies <laughs> specifically, or a medical device, or any of those sure. big regulated uh, uh, you know, corporations, which <clears throat> we really don't fall under because we're providing training to them, um, they are no, but you're, you're really crafting messages for these guys that go to, out. To train them, okay. yes. And they, those are courses and content. It's very important that they you know, really represent the guidelines that we're training on. But... Um, you know, with, when we advertise, we don't need to follow the same guidelines as when they advertise. No, 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 and I didn't mean the guidelines. <clears throat> I mean um, the, the guidelines that they're under, does that influence the way that you craft your messages? Our messages. Right. Yeah. Yeah, your messages and the keywords that you pick and things of that <clears throat> nature. So I was wondering if any of the FD, if any of the um, governmental sort of regulations had anything to do with the way um, you, because I know when I worked in, in an agency and uh, we had AstraZeneca as a client, um, we were very careful about everything that we were crafting because there was all this <clears throat> FDA stuff going on, even though we weren't a pharmaceutical company. Yeah. Uh, we were an agency working for a pharmaceutical company. I was wondering you, you, some yeah, of the Yeah, well, cer certainly the content of our courses. But uh, marketing to them, we, we recognize that they aren't involved a lot with the social networking. They're probably the last to grab on to, mm. you know, those types of tactics. So you're kind of pulling, so, screaming, <clears throat> kicking we, a little bit. Yeah, so we, we don't see, um, you know, the, the Facebook pages and, you know, growing as rapidly with those types of clientele than we would with, uh, with you know, others um, that are more in the retail arena. So Very they, good. they're, you know, the biotech and the pharmaceutical a little bit so they're over regulated. Man. Yeah, they yeah. they want to be careful with they what they say and they don't want to be out there, you know, um, you know, playing around carelessly in the social network Very space. So. Well, Terry, um, that is all of our time tonight. <laughs> And, um, wow, well, they, it went quickly. It went very well. You know, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Well, um, congratulations well, on the show, Dave. Thanks, and thanks for coming out and being the first guest. Thanks and for um, with that, I want to thank you for coming out tonight um, and sitting with Terry and myself on the Digital Strategist uh, here at Soma TV. And we hope to see you next time. Thanks.